Blessed morning, ALCC family. Isn't our God so good? He gave us the privilege to be alive this morning. Now the service is here. Please go and wake up all your friends and family, those that are upstairs, those that are downstairs, those that are outside of the country that you need to share this link to. Go ahead and do it. The service is here. First of all, let's thank God for his goodness, for his mercy, for his protection, for making his way for us. Come on, let's open up our mouth and pray. Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the privilege, for the, for the privilege to see another day in the land of the living. We thank you for the privilege to see the seventh day of our fasting and prayer. Father Lord, we thank you. We appreciate you. We thank you for the strength that you have granted to us in these last seven days. We thank you for the testimonies that are coming forth on a daily basis. Father Lord, we say thank you. We honor you. We appreciate you. We thank you because you have declared that this year as the year of supernatural restoration. We thank you because your people have been experiencing restoration since the beginning of this year. We say thank you, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's pray that by the authority in the name of Jesus, we yield today's service into the absolute control of the Holy Spirit. We shall experience God's presence power for a change of story and for a change of destiny. Come on, let's open up our mouth and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we soak this service into the blood of Jesus. Lord, have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Take absolute control in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall experience you like never before. We shall experience you like never before. We shall experience a power of change. We shall experience a change of story in our destiny, in our lives, in our finances, in our spiritual life. There shall be your change of story this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, have your way. Take absolute control in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue to pray. Let's pray. Let's pray that every aspect of today's service will walk according to God's plan. The word of God shall be delivered, uninterrupted, undiluted to bring answers, solutions, miracles, deliverance, breakthroughs, and divine instruction for our next levels in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, let's open up our mouth and pray that prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as your word is coming forth, it will come undiluted, on in, 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 in that in the mighty name of Jesus. As your word will be coming forth, it will, we will not be distracted. We will not be distracted in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall receive your word mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word will bring answers. We bring solutions to our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. For all standing, all outstanding issues, all outstanding issues in our lives, your word will turn it around. Your word will bring answers. Your word will bring deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word will bring anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. Our lives will not be the same this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. We honor you, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you all the adoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Now let's pray for ourselves. Let's pray that God will open our hearts to receive as the word is coming forth, as the set man of God will be bringing, is bring them, bringing the word this morning. Let's pray. Lord, open my heart to receive. What you want me to receive today? Your favor, your wisdom, your instruction. The open my heart to receive the word. Come on, let's open up our mouth and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we soak all attendees in the blood of Jesus as they will be hearing your word, as they will be hearing the worship this morning. Lord, open their hearts to receive. Open their heart to receive the blessings that you have designed for us this morning. The blessings that you have ordained for us. The instructions for our next level that you have ordained for us this morning. Open our hearts to receive through your word. Open our hearts to receive your word. Open our hearts to receive the miracles through your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word. We receive your word by faith. We receive your word by faith in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not just be the heir of the word. We shall be the doer of the word in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's pray this last prayer. Let's pray that, Lord, let's pray that for an outstanding visitation, that, Lord, visit me today. Visit me today. Whatever my heart desires may be, whatever it is that, that may be a long-standing issues in my life, in my destiny, let there be a divine visitation. Come on, let's open up our mouth and pray this last prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, as we are here this morning, as we are participating in today's service, Father, Lord, let there be a divine visitation in the lives of your people, in the lives of every single viewers. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, 
visit them. Visit your people in the mighty name of Jesus. As your people are participating in today's service. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, their life will not be the same. Their life will not be the same. Their lives will not be the same in the mighty name of Jesus. Testimonies will come forth. Testimonies will come forth. Testimony will come forth in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. We honor you. We appreciate you. We thank you because today's service is going to be a service like never before. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for your miracles. We thank you for the blessings. We thank you. We appreciate you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you all the adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, the service is now officially open. Let's welcome the New Dimension Choir. Enjoy. But I'm fired up. I'm fired up to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout one more time. Hallelujah. Come on, put those hands together. Let's praise them together. Come on.
give him a shout in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know there's no God like Jehovah? There's no God like our God of ALCC. Hallelujah. And we declare, Lord, that you are great. We declare, Lord, that you are awesome. We declare, God, that you are the mighty one, the magnificent one, the one that brought us here in our year of dominion and glory. Come on, I know I have a witness in this place. How many know that God is great? That God is awesome? How many know that God is awesome? Come on, lift your hands and worship because he's here in this place. Lord, we glorify you. We testify to your goodness forever and ever, Lord, because you are great. Oh, yes, Lord, because you and only you are great. Hallelujah. So we say, holy, 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 God almighty. It's a privilege to worship. Awesome time of praise and worship. Thank you very much, New Dimension Choir. Good morning, Breakthrough family. Our God is still in the business of doing signs and wonders. It's testimony time. Well, we have three testimonies to share with you today. The first is from one of our blessed sisters here at, Winner, at Winner's house. It says, and I read, Good morning, Pastor Festus and Pastor Antonia and the Breakthrough family. For about a year now, I've, I was bouncing around searching for a home church and I was invited to ALCC. On 7th March 2020, I visited the church for the first time. Continued, but not yet decided. Then I stayed at home, increased my tithes to my church in my country. I was still searching for an online church and scrolled to ALCC. It was just the preaching and prayer of Pastor Festus, and I was connected. During the pandemic, I was physically and spiritually challenged. I started evangelizing, encouraging, and praying for the sick at my job, even though it is not allowed. But I found a means to do it through administering treatments to them. They accepted Christ. They were uplifted. Many died, but the Lord recovered. Finally, I, visited, I revisited ALCC when the church reopened. The preaching increased my faith. And in October, the minister preached that you need to carry out whatever God is speaking to you to do. I prayed and God showed me two schools in my district back in my country that I should get iPad for the kids. I started asking friends for loans to no avail. So I used my contributions to purchase 50 iPads. God ministered to me to increase my tithes and giving. I was nervous as I really didn't see how it was possible at that time, but I obeyed anyway. Started a home 
a homeless feeding program with 25 men that have not turned to 75. And God continued to bless me abundantly. I had an aspiration to purchase a house of my own. All efforts seemed impossible. One time I got a letter that my loan was denied. The next day they requested for my paperwork, but I knew victory was near. So I decided I would let go, but I would lose my down payment. But I called on God for help. On December 31st, 2020, I emailed it as a request and watched as Pastor Festus poured the oil and the fire of God on it. And I said, done. The cause is broken. Pastor Antonia prophesied on Saturday and I received all the prayers. I received a call from the broker and my loan for the home has been approved. I give God all the glory and adoration. I thank Sister Alexandra for inviting me to ALCC and everyone that stood by me. I thank Pastor Festus and Antonia for their teaching, preaching, and prayers. God will reward you greatly in Jesus' name. The second testimony is from Sister Patricia Felix. She says, and I read, I started attending Abundant Life Christian Center about two years ago. Since then, I have taken my relationship with God more seriously. As a result of the teachings received here, I have come to realize and understand that I'm a spirit being. I have also been learning about how to work in the spirit. Although I previously visited different churches since my teenage years, I did not understand the truth about living by the spirit rather than the flesh until I started attending ALCC. Through the teachings received here, I, I have grown so much in my work with God and I now understand the principles of working with God better. I'm grateful to our senior pastors, Dr. Festus and Antonia Adair for, continue, for continuously teaching us the undiluted word of God. And the last testimony I have for you today is from Sister Marilyn. She says, thank you so much, Pastor Festus and Antonia. You have both been a blessing and inspiration to my life. I receive every word spoken over my life, and I continue to see it come to pass. For, for unto whomsoever much is given, much is also required. I humbly thank God for the little token I'm able to bless you with. My job was ending at the end of the month. I was going to Boston for three months and returned to Kentucky in May for three months. My client's sister-in-law was pregnant and the family wanted me to come back to work with them. During one of the episodes of Faith Over Fear, Pastor Festus said, someone is going to get some good news. And I tapped into it. Trusting God and praying about staying with a family instead of traveling around. I went over to my client's parents' home for dinner shortly after that. Her dad asked me what assignment I had next. I told him Boston, but someone called me from Minneapolis but not sure if I want to be traveling around anymore. He said, you don't have to, and, I, and we don't mind keeping you until May. What an answered prayer. Thank God for continuous prayers, love, and support. Thanks for the online services. It has been my life's line that, is, that has been keeping me grounded. One thing I've learned from Pastor Festus that has remained with me is to be humble in all that I do. And I've seen the benefits of being humble. Love and miss you all. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these testimonies. Bible declares that you are no respecter of persons. You that have done this for these brethren, you are able to do for everyone that is trusting you for one thing or the other. We give you praise and we give you thanks. In the name of Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. Amen. Thank you so much and let's make welcome the New Dimension Choir. Walking the same old road for miles and miles. If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. Oh, if you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel low. I 
Hallelujah. Do we believe that, church? We all search for the light of day in the dead of night. We all found ourselves worn out from the same old fire. Blessings to you, Brito family. It is well. Well, happy Sunday to you. I'm sure you've been blessed by the ministrations that have gone forward. Hallelujah. Go ahead and begin to thank him in your house, in your place of work, wherever you're watching from. Go ahead and bless God. Appreciate him for his restoration agenda over your life. Psalm 71, verses 21 to 22. He said, though you have made me see troubles, many and many and bitter, 
you will restore my life again from the depth of the earth. You will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and comfort me once for. Come on, go ahead and begin to bless God for restoring you from every trouble, every trial, for restoring you from the depth of the earth, for bringing you up again, for increasing your honor. Father, we thank you for your restoration agenda for us in this year, 2021, in the Breakthrough family. We thank you for the power of restoration at work in our lives. In Jesus' name, Isaiah 58, that is his chapter on fasting. In this season of our fasting, amen, it says here, it says then in verse 8, your light will break forth like the morning and your healing, your restoration and the power of a new life shall spring forth speedily. This is amplified scripture. Say, Father, thank you that the light of my destiny begins to break forth like the morning. The light of my destiny begins to break forth. Father, I pray today that the light of my destiny will break forth like the morning in the name of Jesus. He says your restoration and the power of a new life will spring forth speedily. Father, Thank you that our restoration will spring forth speedily. The restoration of our joy, of our health, of our strength will spring forth speedily in Jesus' name. Verse 11 says, and the Lord will guide you continually. Satisfy you in drought and in dry places. He said, You shall be like a watered garden and a spring that the water will never fail. Come on, say, Father, I thank you for guiding me in and leading me in this year 2021. Pray for divine direction. Father, I thank you for guiding me away from trouble and leading me into testimonies, leading me into provisions. Begin to thank God for guiding you away as you are waiting on Him. One of the blessings of waiting is divine guidance. Father, thank you for guiding me this year 2021 i thank you for releasing grace for abundant supplies supernatural supplies he said you shall be like a well watered garden spring whose water never fade this is a year of never dry never dry year never dry favor in the name of jesus go ahead and bless him right now father we thank you in jesus name we pray amen 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 brethren family shortly we're going to be talking about Engaging the power of the altar for supernatural restoration. Amen. Engaging the power of the altar for supernatural restoration. Come on, say, this is my day of supernatural restoration. Say, come on, say, this is my moment. This is my hour of supernatural restoration. In Joel 3.25, God said, I will restore to you the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the locust, the caterpillar, the years they have eaten. He said you will eat in plenty and be satisfied and you will praise the Lord who has dealt wondrously with you in your midst. He will release his power upon you to see vision and to dream dreams. Hallelujah. So we know that in life, amen, it is possible in life to lose things. It is possible to lose things in life. But no matter what you have lost, either time, the errors, the hurt you might have seen in life, restoration is possible. Restoration is possible. The most difficult thing to restore is time. But God is giving you his word. He said, I will restore to you the years. I will restore the time you have lost. I will restore the, the opportunities you have lost. I pray this year that every opportunity, amen, wasted years, fruitless years, amen, Christless years, godless years, years of mistake, years of rebellion against God and against authorities that might have brought loss into our lives by the word of the Lord that says he will restore. There shall be restoration in your life, say amen. There shall be restoration in your life, say amen. And God said that we are going to eat in plenty. Hallelujah. One of the ways to restore years and restore time is through multiply productivity, multiply fruitfulness. That is, God converged the two rainy seasons into one period for them. Amen. God gave them bumper harvest to compensate for the loss of the four years. When God restores your wasted year, the profit you will have made during the years, amen, that you are denying, God will add them up. I give them to you. I see somebody, whatever you have lost in years, is coming back in this season. Come and say, Amen. You will eat in plenty. You shall be satisfied. It's your year to praise God. It's your year of power. It's your year of protection. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Engaging the altar, the prayer altar for supernatural restoration. The prayer altar is a restoration altar. 
The prayer altar is the restoration altar. So we want to look at how do you experience restoration, supernatural restoration through prayer. How, what role does prayer play in restoration? Prayer is one of the most effective weapons for divine restoration. And I thank God as well. We thank God for this time of waiting upon the Lord. There is no restoration without prayer. There is no restoration without prayer. In fact, if you have restoration, it won't last without prayer. You, you are restored by prayer, and prayer sustains your restoration. The altar of prayer is the altar where the divine meets with human for an exchange. Amen. So the altar of prayer is where the divine meets with human for exchange. It has been well said that prayer is the key that opens every door, including the door of restoration, including the door of healing, amen, including the door of, of, of being blessed. It, uh, when you want to start the day in the morning, prayer is the key to open it. When you want to sleep, prayer is the key also, amen, that, that locks the door against challenges, against attack in your dream. When Christians pray, amen, as we ought to pray, revival fire sweeps through the land. It is prayer that brings out the revival of God. And there's never Anytime we need to be revived, the church needs to be revived through the power of prayer than today. Amen. That church of God, they are being deceived with conspiracy theory. We are coming against constituted authority, rebelling and, and, and supporting all kinds of rebels against the authority of the land, carrying conspiracy lies all around because the people of God, they have abandoned their altar of prayers. And when you abandon your altar of prayers, you will embrace the altar of lie and deception. I pray for the church of God today, whatever lie and deception of Satan that we have bought by the power of God, the church of God, may our eyes be open, may the eyes of leaders of the church be open, amen, all over this nation and all over the world so that we divorce Satan and divorce his conspiracy and his lie and see the truth of God's word in Jesus' name. Prayer is the altar of restoration of health. Amen. Prayer is the altar for restoration of health. We saw that in 1 Kings chapter 13, verses 4 to 6, a king, his hand became leprous and withered. But through prayer of the man of God, his hand was restored to him. Whatever has been damaged in your life, on this altar of prayer today, there shall be restoration. Come on, say amen. Prayer altar is the altar for restoration of finance. The prayer altar is the altar for restoration of finance. In second king, that woman, she was broke. They were to take her son. She cried to the man of God, which is a form of prayer. Her financial condition changed. Hallelujah. I see somebody's finance be changing this season. The prayer altar is the altar for restoration of life. A life Ezekiah was to die. But he turned his face to the wall. He prayed, God, under 15 years. I am a Sakatai and a soya. The prayer altar is the altar for restoration from grief and shame. It's the altar for restoration of your sight. Amen. Whatever area you are blind, you cannot be prayerful and be blind. No. Prayer opens your eyes of the spirit to contact the plan of God, to contact the purpose of God, to contact the agenda of God. Prayer opens your eyes to see the plan of God, to see the purpose of God, to contact the agenda of God for your life. From today, I pray, darkness is removed from your life. The light of God begins to show upon you in Jesus' name. Let's look at the role of faith. I mean, of prayer in divine restoration. What are the specific roles of prayer in divine restoration? I'm going to give you three, then I will move, we we'll push it forward. Number one, prayer gives you strength to pursue your restoration. Prayer gives you strength to pursue your restoration. There's somebody you're hearing me today, by reason of challenges, by reason of, of what you're going through, you are becoming weary. May God renew your strength. May God fire up your strength in the name of Jesus. It takes strength to pursue your restoration. It takes strength to pursue your restoration, be it mental strength. Sometimes you need emotional strength. You are emotionally drained because of things. Sometimes you are physically drained. Sometimes you are spiritually drained. You don't have motivation 
to do anything. But when you go into the prayer room, hallelujah, you come out changed. You come out revitalized. You come out renewed. You come out, you may drag yourself on the altar of prayer, to the altar of prayer, but, but you may start gradually. I'm telling you, by the time you begin to pray, you release yourself to the Holy Ghost. There's a power that flows from heaven, from the throne of God, that energizes you. Why? Because there are times that the weight of the loss, amen, can weigh you down. There are times when you reach a point that you may want to be discouraged. Amen. Uh, you want to lose hope and be discouraged. But prayer is the foil that fires the engine of your life. That's why it says God is the one that gives strength to those who don't have it. He, re he renews the strength to those who are weary. As I have for it. Today, I don't know where you are losing strength. You want to be discouraged. May the grace of God on this altar of prayer fire you up, revitalize you, renews you in the name of Jesus. Come and say, in the name of Jesus, I am renewed. Come and say, by the power, in the name of Jesus, my strength is renewed. My strength is revived. In the name of Jesus, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, I am renewed. In the name of Jesus. David and his men, they were tired. They wept and wept and wept. They had no more strength to weep. But David did something. It was a form of prayer. He began to encourage himself. That's prayer. He just said in the presence of God, Father, I thank you. You, you begin to just meditate. Wow, God has been so good to me. I mean, look at the way he has helped me. He began to encourage himself in the Lord. He's God. I mean, he communed with God, with God. Sometimes he may just be, you're just sitting down there, God. Oh, you're just meditating on the goodness of God for your life. Then you say, wow, if God helped me last time, he's going to help me this time. When David prayed, he summoned strength. He got a strength, amen, to pursue against, against those the, who looted and destroyed his family and he recovered all. Today, the strength you need to pursue, to overtake, to recover all, you receive it. Now, come and say, my father, my father, every strength needed for me to pursue, to overtake, to recover all in the journey of life, I receive it in the name of Jesus. You might not have lost anything. I told you, when we talk of restoration, it's not only going after what Satan has taken from you. Restoration is also receiving what the enemy has prevented you from receiving. There are some things he didn't take from you, but he blocked you. He hindered you from rising to that dimension to grab what God has for you. Everything, every dimension that Jehovah has for you that you've been blocked from receiving, begin to receive right now. Receive strength to go after your destiny. Receive strength to pray as you ought to pray. Receive strength to give as you ought to give. Receive strength to pursue as you ought to pursue. Receive strength to give your life all it takes and there shall be restoration in the name of Jesus. Number two, prayer helps you to overcome opposition to your restoration. Prayer does not only give you strength to pursue your restoration. Prayer helps you to overcome opposition to your restoration. To every restoration, there are oppositions. To every restoration agenda God has for you, there are oppositions. Nehemiah, amen, engaged in restoring the wall of Jerusalem. He had his hand to begin to walk. But the Bible said in chapter 4 of Nehemiah, verses 7 to 9, now it happened when Sambala, Tobia, the Arabs, the Ammonites, amen, these people together, when they heard that the wall were being restored and the gaps were beginning to be closed, they became very angry. When they heard that there was a restoration of the war, some people became angry. There are times that some people they hear that you are rising, you are waking up, you are restoring your destiny, you are restoring your spiritual life, you are restoring your relationship with God, you are restoring your marital relationship, and they will get angry. And they say all of them conspire, amen, verse 8, to come and attack them and create confusion. He said, but nevertheless, what did they do? In verse 9, we made our prayer to our God. Hallelujah. And set a watch. Nehemiah prayed. Amen. And he overcame. 
overcame the obstacles. He, he lifted up. Yeah, he was a very sharp man. He was a state man. He had all the, the, the strategies and had all the men to help him. But the first thing he did was to lift up an altar of prayer. Hallelujah. He cried unto God. You see several instances through the encounter of Nehemiah in the, in the days, the fixed that war, that he turned to prayer and God helped him that every opposition that came against him, he was able to defeat them. Today I pray on this altar, every opposition to your restoration shall be defeated. Come on, say amen. Every opposition to your restoration shall be defeated. Look at verse 10 of that same Nehemiah chapter 4. He said, the strength of the laborer is failing and there's so much rubbish. So it came to a point they were tired. They were weary. Opposition kept coming against them. And, and the people, the laborers became weary. Their strength was just, was diminished. Amen. And he said then, then the enemy said in verse 11, that they will never know or see anything to will come into their means and kill them and cause the work to cease. The enemy plotted, amen, unseen enemy. There are some enemies you don't see, amen, unknown enemy. This enemy, they plotted, they said, we're going to come in the unknown time without them knowing. We're going to come in an unguided moment. But in verse 12, it says, so it was when the Jews drew near that they told us, they told them several times. But because of their prayer, amen, because of their diligence, God gave them victory. They defeated the unseen enemy. I pray today, every known and unknown opposition, every sin and unseen opposition coming against you, coming against me, coming against your family, coming against the SEC family, coming against this nation, they are defeated. They are arrested. They are shattered in the name of Jesus. Come on, say amen. Kapal in Isaiah. Number three, how does prayer help you in supernatural restoration? I told you number one, I said prayer gives you strength. Amen. Because at times you need strength. Number two, prayer helps you to overcome opposition. Then number three, prayer is the facilitator of your restoration. I put this one last. It's supposed to be the first. Prayer, amen, a fervent prayer life. I'm not talking of uh, SOS prayer life. There are some people, they put prayer until they have a problem. You know, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking of having a lifestyle of prayer. Whereby, that's what you do. That's who you are. You wake up in the morning, you pray. In the, mid, in the night, you, you find time to pray. Even in the daytime, you are in the presence of God. You, you, you are walking, you're praying behind the, your tongue. Amen. A fervent prayer life. When you engage in that, it becomes a facilitator of your restoration. You cannot be prayerful and be dry. It's not possible. You cannot be prayerful and experience devastation all your life. Devastation may want to come, but your prayer will turn your devastation to restoration. Hallelujah. Shout right there. So restoration will not happen until God's people have humbled themselves, prayed, Seek his face. Turn from their wicked way. That's why I put it last. It's the foundation. Second Chronicles 7, 14. God said, listen, if there's no rain on the earth. God said, if nothing is happening, everything is dry, even if he himself is the one that we told rain, that there is no rain, there is no favor, there is no crop, all things are going wrong. But if the people of God will humble themselves, seek his face, Turn from their wicked ways. Repent of their wicked ways. God said, he will hear from heaven, forgive them, and do what? Heal the lamb. Woo! No restoration. Better than that. So the first thing to do is to know that prayer is a facilitator, essentially prayer of repentance, prayer of humility. Amen. Prayer of a contrite heart. Sometimes some people, they pray wrongly. When they ought to pray prayer of repentance, they are praying prayer of binding and loosening. You know, they are praying prayer of I know my authority. No, no, honey, you have wrong God. You need to pray. Actually, in this moment, we need to rise of God, restore your glory to this nation. Restore peace to our street. Restore peace to this nation. You will see what is happening. I mean, and the number of the, the, the armies uh, at Capitol, uh, Capitol Hill. I mean, but we need God to bring restoration. People are angry. People are deceived. Even well-meaning Christians, they are deceived. We need to pray. 
pray for God to restore this land. But we must be calling, God, we have sinned against you. The church have sinned, we've sinned against you. The leaders of the church, they have sinned against you. Father, have your mercy upon this land. And you pray that prayer for yourself. Because when you, this is now, when you confess your sin, you will have mercy. Hallelujah. So, prayer is the facilitator of restoration. Until there was an initiation of prayer from heaven, from the Israelites, there was no restoration from captivity. God said 400 years. He told, he told uh, in Genesis chapter 15, God told Abraham in Genesis 15, he says your, your seed, your children will go to a strange land. They will be held captive for 400 years. But that restoration never happened until 430 years because 400 years came, the people were, they didn't say nothing. 401 years, they didn't say nothing. 402 years, they didn't say nothing. 410 years, they didn't say nothing. 420, nothing. There was no initiation to heaven. They didn't call on heaven. There was no prayer that God were tired. God left them until they cried to God. So in Exodus 3, 7, God said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people that are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their tax master. I have heard their cry. Now, amen, I am sending you Moses to them. There, there will be no sending for restoration until there's a crime from you for restoration. When there's a crime for restoration, there will be a sending of restoration. There will be a releasing of restoration. I pray today on this altar of prayer, Mazoka Paya, for every man, for every woman in Abundant Life Christian Center, online, watching us today in our online community, wherever area you are held captive, may heaven release you. May heaven restore you. In the name of Jesus, may heaven Heaven restore you. The master of all restoration took place on the altar of prayer. Job, nine months of affliction, nine months of devastation. But in Job chapter 42, verse 10, the Bible says, Now when Job prayed for his friend. See, so many combinations there. He prayed out of, he prayed prayer of forgiveness. He prayed prayer of release. He prayed prayer out of the heart of love. But prayer was still the foundation. When he prayed, God restored double for Job. So, remember, Hannah's story was a restoration of destiny from shame to honor. His uh, story was that of a woman who started out helpless, hopeless, harassed, and sorrowful. But her life experienced a turn around of laughter, a restoration of joy. Amen. And through the testimony from the altar of prayer, this woman went to the sanctuary herself, took her case to God. She had the body, prayed her heart. Amen. Her mouth was moving. No words. But on that altar of prayer, Caleb also to in First Samuel chapter one verse fifteen. Anna answered and I said, "No, my Lord, I'm not. A, I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. I've never drunk anything." And the man of God said, "Go for your prayer." They answered. She settled the case on her knees. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's somebody here. You need to go back to the school of neology. You need to learn to settle your case on your knees. Amen. Not on arguing with people. Ah, may the anointing to pray as you ought to pray. May he rest upon you today. The anointing to seek God as you ought to seek him rest upon us today. I pray for the revival of prayer in the breakthrough family. Mazoka, Pali, Nakotaya. Everybody, wherever you are, begin to pray in turn. Mazoka, let us receive the anointing of revival of prayer, revival of seeking God. I felt something turn loose right now in your living room, wherever you are, your bedroom, your kitchen, your place of work. I'm feeling something. There's a revival fire going on. Revival fire. Come on, set your heart. Set your heart. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Pray in tongue. Connect right now. The anointing is flowing through your TV, flowing through your computer, flowing through your phone. It's touching you right now. Revival is take my God. Mazakapa. I come against every weariness. I I raise every tiredness, I raise prayerlessness, I raise the spirit of slothfulness, Kapali Nasaya. He said, when men, while men slept, the enemy so tears. Those who have been slumbering, who has been sleeping in spirit, I arrest that spirit. That spirit that is not allowing you to pray as you ought to pray is arrested. Now receive the fire of God. Receive the revival of prayer. Mazoka Palinasa. Come on, say, I receive it. I receive it. Pray in tongue. Pray in tongue. Zero Mazaka Talikitosh Pranik. 
Ege doska paya. Come and say, I come against prayerlessness. Say, come and say, Father, I reject prayerlessness. I reject prayerlessness. I reject prayerlessness. I reject the spirit of prayerlessness. Kalerobo saya babaraka. Reject it. Reba shayama sotaya. Rima kosaya. And a few months later, in verse 27, Hannah showed up. She said, for this child, I pray. And the Lord has granted me my petition, which I ask of him. For this child, I pray. For this reviver, I pray. For this renewer, I have prayed. For this restoration, I have prayed. <laughs> For the restoration of my child, I have prayed. Now, I am here with the testimony, with the evidence of my prayer. Hey, that's somebody. You are showing up. You cannot pray without seeing the evidence. Those who pray, they live a life of evidence. You can never see them dry. Today, I pray for you. I pray for me. I pray for everyone in the British family. We, in not too long, not too long now, we will all show up with our own Samuel. Our own Samuel means the evidences of our prayers. The evidences of our prayers. None that is engaged in this, no matter the level you, you connect with, you will have evidence for it. Come on, say amen. You will have evidence for it and evidences. Jabez experienced destiny restoration <clears throat> on the platform of prayer. Despite the bitter and the sorrowful beginning of his life, he ended up more honorable. <laughs> you have never seen a prayerful man that is not a honorable man. I mean, I've never seen a prayerful woman that is not a honorable woman. Jabez in 1 Chronicles 4, 9 to 10 became more honorable. He settled the case that your mother curse you is not a problem. That your father placed a curse on you is not a problem. That your uncle placed a curse on you is not a problem. That your previous husband is going from voodoo houses in Haiti, in Africa, in Jamaica, in Caribbean island, somewhere, in the, anywhere, anywhere, anywhere in India, and they are trying to look for how to hurt you is not a problem. Somebody is conjuring your name anywhere for for evil, it's not a problem. Amen. The problem is, are you on your knees to touch the altar of God? So that the fire from the altar will shatter every strange fire that anybody is setting against you. Maso Kapaya, the mother of Jabez, amen, place a curse and place a limitation upon his destiny. But this man, one prayer night, I mean one prayer counter, one prayer service, he turned things around. He broke that curse. He said, I don't want to bring shame. I don't want to bring pain. Make me more honorable. Enlarge my cause. Somebody say, my father, my father, every curse, every human limitation that has been placed upon my destiny, it breaks right now. On this altar of prayer, wherever you are becomes an altar of prayer. Come on, say, my father, my father, whatever human limitation, whatever satanic limitation, whatever curse placed upon my life, it may hinder my destiny from rising. Let it break, let it break, let it break, let it break in the name of Jesus. I command it to be broken, shattered. In the name of Jesus. Marco Pasaya and Akura Basaya. Come on, say, my father, my father, let my destiny begin to enlarge. Come on, say, enlarge my coast. Extend my boundary. Make me a man of influence, a woman of influence and affluence. In the name of Jesus. How about Jacob? Jacob had a change of destiny. called destiny restoration. After he took delivery of power with God. On the altar of prayer, he had one chance. He had one chance, one encounter. He drove away uh, uh, distraction. That's why if you're going to maximize the altar of prayer, refuse to be distracted this year. Make up your mind. I will not allow my peers to distract me. I will not allow success to distract me. I look at some people, what do they have? I, I don't see it. They allow that to distract them. You don't see them burning for God. They allow their careers to distract them. They allow six-figure salary to distract them. They allow the fact that they're driving the best car in town to distract them. So-called best car in town. They allow the so-called, they are living in the best neighborhood in town to distract them. Now they are big pompous. Amen. Don't allow distraction. Jacob put aside. He became alone with God. 
Being alone with God is not a problem. Being alone with God is not a curse. Sometimes it's the best thing. You need to place it upon yourself to set time to be alone with God. Because that's when God, when God gets your attention, amen. This is not when God gets your attention, he moves your destiny in the right direction. When God gets your attention, he moves your destiny in the right direction. Jacob secured the attention of God. He heard God one night in Genesis chapter 32. And he took delivery of restoration of his destiny. Up until this moment, things were going wrong. Of course, he was having material success. But he knew that the destiny God has for him, he was walking in opposition to it. Materially, he was okay. Some of you, you are okay materially. But you know, in the deep recesses of your soul, you are hollow, you are empty. But today, in these 21 days, in this beginning of this year, this is the time for you to fill yourself with the fullness of God. Change direction so that you will engage. Five things change in his life. That's why I want to anchor this. Five things change. Number one, the first thing that changed in the life of Jabez, and which, I mean the life of Jacob that will change in your life today. He broke the generational curse in his life and his lineage. There was a generational curse in his life and his lineage. Up to now, there was a curse of barrenness in his family. Amen. The curse of barrenness. The first barrenness mentioned in the Bible was Sarah. In Genesis 11, 30. She was the first person. The second time was Rebecca's wife. That's Sarah's daughter-in-law. Genesis 25, verse 21. The third one was Jacob's wife. In Genesis 29, verse 31. Amen. And Leah too. That means... They, they introduced barrenness into the scripture, into the whole human race. The flat family introduced barrenness. It was like their lineage introduced barrenness until Jacob decided this thing must change. That night, he took delivery of, of grace. He took delivery of the power of restoration. After Jacob, there was no more mention of barrenness in his lineage. Hallelujah. It ended with Jacob. Because he decided to end it. Hallelujah. Do I have a Jacob of his family here this, this day? Come on, you're saying where you are now, you are getting angry. You are seeing some patterns in your family. And you are saying, as a Jacob of my family, I decree an end to this plague. I decree an end to this evil plague in my family. As you are saying it, so shall be the end of it. Number two, he, he overcame. I told you five things that happened that changed in his life. The spell of struggle was broken in his life. It broke, it, it broke the spell of struggling. From the, from, why from the womb? He struggled with his brother. When he came out, he struggled to get the, the, the bat right. Amen. Nothing Jacob achieved without struggle. Nothing. He got the bat right by it. He got the blessing by struggle. He married his first wife and they, and they didn't give it to him. He had to labor another seven years and they changed his, uh, his uh, salary almost 20 times, you know, on and on and on and on. There was perennial, perennial struggle. I mean, he became <coughs> an anointed struggler. Until that day, power came on the altar of prayer. Somebody all your life, you've been struggling and struggling and so nothing ever comes to you with ease. Today, on this altar of prayer, that's power of struggling before you break forth, breaks in your life. Come on, say amen. I decree it by the oil of God upon my life and the anointing resident on this altar, the power to struggle in order to sow. That power breaks. Now you begin to sow with ease. Number three is, is identity change. No more Jacob, but Israel. Hallelujah. Hey, no more Jacob. From that day, they don't call him Jacob anymore. They call him Israel. Hallelujah. The prince of God. The one blessed of God. From a supplanter. From a cheater. From the one that's always lying to get to it. Now he became the prince of God. Your identity changes on the altar of prayer. Number four, he enlarged his, his capacity enlarged. He moved from Jacob, an individual. He became a nation. He became Israel. Hallelujah. There are some of you, you have the capacity, amen, to build estates for people to live. You are struggling in one apartment. I pray before this 21 days is over, your true purpose, your capacity, amen, will begin to show forth. Your true identity of your capacity will begin to show forth. Finally, it empowered him to prevail in life. Hallelujah. Amen. As a prince, thou art power with God and with man. And thou hast prevailed. There is what is called power to prevail. That no matter what is thrown at you, you overcome. That's what I call the power to prevail. 
The power that no matter what is thrown at you, you overcome. That is the power at work in the nation of Israel today. Surrounded by hostile nations, but they always overcome. Amen. All Israelites in the whole world, six million, but yet mighty all over the world. Unable to be destroyed by Pharaoh at rest. Israel is an indestructible nation. Hallelujah. And if Jesus tarries, your children will never know a curse. If God tarries, amen, whatever comes against you, by the anointing you are contacted today, you will not be destroyed. You become indestructible. You become a liar. Come and say, my father, my father, I tap into grace to prevail in life. Come and say, in the name of Jesus, I embrace grace. I embrace the anointing to prevail in life. Come and say, my father, place on me the anointing the power to prevail in life in the name of Jesus. Caleb Osa, two things that amplifies your prayer among many. But because of time, I want to wrap it up. Two things that amplifies your prayer. Number one, faith. There are two things, faith and revelation. We're going to deal with faith. We understand that it is faith that gives value to your prayers. It is faith that gives value to your prayers. It is faith that guarantees answers to your prayers. In James chapter 1, verses 6 to 7, it says, But let him ask in faith without doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of sea, driven and tossed by wind. Let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord, for he's a double minded, unstable in all his way. Prayer is barren and fruitless without faith, without trusting God, without a conviction that as you are praying it, God is hearing it. God is answering you. So you need to mix the, your, your, your prayer with faith. Hallelujah. You need to miss it. Hebrews 4, 2. He said they pray. If they didn't have resolve because it was not mixed with faith. Just like fasting without prayer is dieting, praying without faith is religious futility. How long you pray does not guarantee answers. The how long you pray does not guarantee answers. The prayer that brought down fire from heaven was just 60, 60 seconds prayer. Amen. The prayer that brought fire from heaven. The depth of faith employed is what is important. Your prayer is not answered by the quantity of the words, but by the quality of your faith. So your faith is very vital. Your faith is very vital. And one of the proofs of faith is unshakable expectation. When you know, you know, you know, heaven heard you and your answer has been released. Today, I pray for faith to rise up inside of you. I pray for you to begin to hear the abundance of rain right now. Your restoration, you, you come to a point, you know that you know, you know, you know, your restoration is here. Your deliverance is here. No devil has the capacity, the ability to stop you from becoming who God wants you to be. Number two is revelation. Revelation is the uncovering of the enemy's agenda. When God opens your eyes and gives you an inside information to see the agenda of the enemy, to see the plan of God, to see the purpose of God, your prayer becomes more definite and more clear when you have revelation behind it. You are not just praying in the dark. I remember one of our sisters wanted to have a baby. That was like 12 years ago, to be exact. In the month of January, we went out 21 days of fasting. And things turned, turned badly. I mean, badly. Badly to a point whereby we were, we're praying to rescue her life. To rescue. She delivered the baby. But she, she I mean, it, it turned. Medically, it became a problem. And we we're just praying. There was so much. If not for God, we knew there would have been pandemonium and panic. I, I, I took the basement of our house. My wife took up. And we were all praying. I mean, <laughs> The kind of prayers that you know this is SOS prayer. I went to the basement. My wife went up. As I was praying and praying in the basement, in the middle of the night, God just gave me a trance. I saw her upside down, tied. And I saw some people around. She was tied upside down. They tied her leg. Inside up, I said, in the name of Jesus, every rope, every chain they used to tie this person, I cut it. Let it be removed. Rather massacre palikata. That was the beginning of the reversing of the evil. She got her breakthrough as if it never happened. Amen. And God, 12 years ago, gave us the victory. Hear me. When God opens your eyes to see 
Amen. How things look, it helps you to pray. That's why I don't pray in the dark. Pray that God should reveal to you sometimes. Amen. What is wrong? How to pray? And that's why it goes to pray in the spirit. Because there are times when you pray in the spirit. I said, we don't know how to pray. I say, oh, but the Holy Ghost. That's why when you are praying, sometimes you release yourself. For the Holy Ghost to pray through you, through your tongue. And the Holy Ghost will begin to touch areas you don't know. Today I pray. Whatever sin and unseen. Ah, Kaliba Saiba, challenge behind your life. May your eyes open the grace of revelation, the grace of faith. Let it be released upon you in Jesus' name. Other things that facilitate your prayer, I'm not going to take time to talk them. You pray according to the will of God. Make sure your prayer aligns with God's word. First, first John chapter 5, verse, verse 14, he said, he said, this is to do, if we pray according to his will, he said, God hears us. If he hears us, then he gives us answer. It's our confidence if we pray according to the So listen to me now. I said the challenge in praying is to get God to hear you. The challenge in getting answer to your prayer is getting God to hear you. If God hears you, God, God answers you. But God only hears prayers that are prayed in alignment with his will. What is his will? His word. Look for the will of God. If your prayer is in line with the word, make sure it is. Pray persistently. Amen. Don't be tired. Don't be weary. Pray persistently. Don't use prayer when you are in need. Pray continuously. Number three, pray with sincerity and earnestness. Let, let your motive be right. Let your motive be right. Don't want to pray to show off. Amen. Pray and flee from sin. Pray with a thankful heart. Thanksgiving is a spiritual signature upon your prayer. When you sign a document, always be thankful. Don't, don't have this entitlement mentality. Give thanks to God all the time. Hallelujah. I pray with a forgiving heart. Forgive anyone and everyone. Mark eleven twenty five to 26. Pray, for, forgive those who are against you. God will answer your prayer. Pray with humility. Pray in the name of Jesus. Every prayer you pray, let it be in the name of Jesus. Not in the name of trouble. Not in the name of a prophet. Not in the name of even your pastor, Pastor Festus, and Antonia. You can pray that the God of Pastor Festus and Antonia that is at work in their life, in the name of Jesus, I pray, amen, that the God at work in their lives, work in my life. Hallelujah. But don't say in the name of my pastor. No, that prayer ain't going nowhere. Pray in the, because at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess. Pray. In the name, pray boldly. Pray in the spirit. I've mentioned that. Come on, wherever you are, go ahead and begin to pray. Masoka Pranikatasa. On this altar of prayer, your restoration is secured. Your restoration is guaranteed. Ramo Saka Pranikatasa. Rege de Sokoto Pranikatosa. Come and say, Father, let the fire on, the, on my prayer altar be rekindled. Come and say, Father, rekindle the fire on my prayer altar. The Bible says in Leviticus 6 12, fire upon your altar will be burning, will never go out. Come and say, Father, my prayer altar will never go out, will never go out. Let the fire on my prayer altar be rekindled right now. Now, in the name of Jesus, Kaporo Nukotos Kapranasa. He said, One man slept, the enemy saw tears. Father, open my eyes to any area where I am negligent, where the enemy is using to oppress me. Open my eyes to see where I am negligent, that the enemy is using to oppress me. Regodo Soto, wherever I'm negligent, that the enemy is using to oppress me. Open my eyes to see in the name of Jesus. Reba Sota Parak. Father, guide me throughout this year. Lead me, open my eyes. Eraba guide me to conceive dreams and vision for progress. Father, open my eyes to conceive dreams and vision for progress. Psalm 119 verse 18. He said, open my eyes, O God. Open my eyes and behold wondrous things. Say, Father, in the year 2021, open my eyes to conceive dreams and vision for progress. Open my eyes to conceive dreams and vision for restoration. Remember that Joel chapter 2 verse 28, the last pillar of this year is the pillar of power. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And the young man will see vision. The, the old one will dream dreams. Ah, it's your year to have vision and dreams. Come on, say, my father, open my eyes to conceive dreams and vision for restoration. Open my eyes to conceive dream and vision for restoration. Rema sakatali rebosko prono kotosa. 
Every identity placed on you, ah, and that is hindering your progress, be removed by the blood of Jesus. Every ungodly label, ungodly identity placed on you by earthly institution, by any heavenly institution that is hindering your progress. Come and say, Father, let it break, 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 let it break. Masoto, come and say, my father, my father, I thank you for restoration of my life. Life, restoration of my health, restoration of my family. Anywhere you desire restoration, go ahead and pray right now. And you can pull up all your prayer points for the year 2021 as you are fasting. Begin to pray over them. Every time we meet, we're going to be praying over them. The one you did on December 31st last year, they were the things you don't want in your life in this year. Now, the things you want to do for God. You want God to use you to do. And the things you want to do in your own life, this year I begin to talk to God. Father, I thank you. I will leave you just one minute to pray those things into your life right now. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Stretch forth your hand. I want to bless you. Stretch forth. Father, this our strength hand, let them carry grace. Let them carry power. Let the fire of revival rest upon you. The fire of revitalization rest upon you. Let prayer revival break out in your life. If there's any part of your body where something is bothering you, place your hand there. Father, wherever people place their hand right now, let the healing fire of God go there. The angels you have released to minister healing, touch your people, minister to them. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus upon you, blood of Jesus upon you, every arrow of infirmity and of sickness, go back to sender, go back to sender, every evil load, load of affliction, of discouragement, a load of failure, back to sender, remove from your life. In the name of Jesus, I decree you will possess your possession. I decree you will fulfill destiny in this year, 2021. Every affliction, every reproach that follow you from your mother's womb, I reject it for you now. In the name of Jesus, every good thing that I have left the hand of God, Yet to reach your hand, it will reach your hand. Every moment of this year, every second shall be joyful, shall be praiseful, shall be honorable, shall be peaceful in the name of Jesus, shall be graceful for you, for me, for the Breto family. As we wait upon the Lord, he renews, he will renew our strength mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, financially. The church of God, even while we are not meeting physically together, God will sustain his church at Bonala Christian Center. This church will not scatter. God will gather his people, will sustain his people. This coronavirus shall pass. None of us in the Brito family, none will pass with it. We shall all remain here to fellowship together, to advance God's kingdom. Be blessed, be favored. This week is a joyful week for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, what an awesome message. AOCC family, have you been blessed today by the word of God? Dr. Festus, we thank you for your life. May God continue to pour more grace, wisdom, anointing, and favor on you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. AOCC family, I'm here today to collect the Titan offering. I'm not going to preach to you or give a word. I want you to simply give your offering as God is placing it on your heart and kindly obey the biblical principle of tithing today as well. And those of you who are part of our Psalms 112 group with our senior pastors who give and donate to people in need around the world, please get ready to give today as well. As you see on the screen, the options are there to use the text to give system or our Zelle payment system today. So please join me as we pray. Father God, just thank you, Lord, for who you are today, God. We just give you all the glory and the praise, Father Lord God. In this moment, God, we accept and receive your offering and tithe into the storehouse. God, as your children, as your people, honor you and sacrifice to you today, God. I pray you honor their sacrifice in Jesus' name. As we are in this year of supernatural restoration, may we see a restoration in all our lives this year, Lord, in triple fold. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
FCC family, please listen to the following announcements because there are a lot of announcements and they are all very, very important for different reasons. Our first announcement is simply this. As you see today, our t uh, for right now, our on-site services have been temporarily postponed. As Pastor Festus has mentioned earlier this week, we will be using and activating once again our covenant sense, yes, but also our common sense. As the numbers of COVID is increasing in New York and around the country, we'll be closing with our on-site service. So please, next Sunday, and for the time being, tune into our service online on this very platform at this time, 10 a.m. on Sunday, on both YouTube and on Facebook. But if you have any testimonies, come on. We want to shame the devil with you. We want to celebrate what God is doing in your life with you and just give him all the praise, glory, and honor. Send your testimonies to testimonies at alcministries.com. I'll say it again. That is testimonies at alcministries.com. Today at 12 noon, our Zoom Winners Academy classes will be going on. This is our Sunday school classes for our very young men and women in the Lord. Parents, please prepare your children to be ready to be blessed by our teachers today by 12. We thank God for the life of our teachers. They're doing an awesome job over Zoom. Our 21 days of fasting continues for the rest of this month. Come on, somebody. Has anyone been blessed so far in this fast? Please continue the fast. Our fasting continues, like I said, to January 31st. Every Tuesday night and Friday night, we will be having our services at 7 p.m. On Tuesday nights, we will have two of our leaders in the church come online and pray for about 25 minutes apiece. That will be both on YouTube and on Facebook. So please be ready to be blessed on those platforms. And if you want a copy of Pastor Fess's book, he has two books for the fasting period, The Prevailing Power of Fasting and the 21 day prayer devotional. They're designed to empower you. They're designed to pick up your spirit in this time of fasting. You need to get a copy of these books if you do not have them. You can kindly reach out to the church at 718-566-2601, extension one, or you can check out Amazon and see if you can get a copy for yourself. Also, our very own elder Oluo J. Gray has released his first book. Come on, everybody. Give the Lord a shout of praise. His book on principles for a year-round winning life has been dropped, and you can find out and get yourself a copy at the church if you reach out to the church number, or you can contact Elder Olu himself. Amen. And for this fasting period, our 21 days of fasting prayers will be posted on our WhatsApp Breaking News group chat. If you are not part of the ALCC Breaking News WhatsApp group chat, please Kindly reach out to the church at 718-566-2601, extension 1. And you can also find these prayers online on our website in Jesus' name. Amen. We have on January 31st our anointing oil service coming up. This anointing oil service, as we have every year, please prepare your anointing oil from your homes where you're staying. And also, if you have anything you want the pastor to pray over, any prayer material, a prayer mantle, objects or pictures or, or whatever it is that we normally do every single year, because we most likely will not be on site, the instruction is to simply do this. Please, you can send it to the church, packaged and wrapped up tightly and sealed, labeled with your name, on it. I'll say it again. If you have a prayer material, a prayer mantle that you want to have the pastor, the senior pastors pray over for this period like we do every year, we want you to wrap it up, seal it tight, and of course put your name on it labeled and send it and come bring it to the church before Friday, January 29th. Before Friday, January 29th as we prepare for that anointing oil service. That day will also be our first fruit offering service. The first fruit offering is a biblical principle that we see in the Bible. As we said earlier for our tithing offering, we're going to bring and give as God has placed on our heart on that day. Or you can already start to, to begin to give them in, as Pastor mentioned this past Friday, about that. The contribution statements for last year are available at the church. You can email the church office about that. You can call us at 718 566-2601 extension 1 or email administrator at alcministries.com if you want your contribution statements from last year. You can get it via email or regular mail or if you use a text to give system, you can text statement plus 2020 and you can also receive it that way in Jesus name. 
Our Faith Over Fear service continues Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. with our very own senior pastor. It has been almost a full year that we've been doing Faith Over Fear, and it has been an amazing platform where God is using our senior pastors to give us a morning devotional to touch our lives. So please tune in on both YouTube and Facebook Tuesdays at 8 a.m. for Faith Over Fear. Wednesdays we have Youth Power Hour. Come on, somebody. Our youth are being blessed and touched by the hand and move of God through that platform. So please, parents, aunts and uncles, if you have children, if you have nieces and nephews who need to be subjected to the word of the Lord, have them tune in on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. on both YouTube and on Facebook. This coming Friday, we will not have Friday Power Night. Instead, we will be the first day of our Winning Team Workers Virtual Retreat. I'll say it again. This Friday will be the first day of our Winning Team Workers Virtual Retreat. We are calling on all ALCC a workers, everyone to tune in and be blessed by this retreat that we are having this weekend. The theme is Kingdom Harvest in the COVID Era. And that starts, like I said, this coming Friday, January 22nd to the 24th on Sunday. And we will be, uh, the ministers will be Dr. James Fidel, Dr. B.C. Tofade, and our very own Dr. Festus Adeye. You do not want to miss this weekend for our workers' retreat. It will, of course, like I said, be online starting Friday at 7 p.m., then Saturday at 10 a.m., and then Sunday to conclude the whole thing at 10 a.m. as well. And, of course, last but not least, our global marathon prayer. Come on, ALCC. I know you're excited for our very first global marathon prayer for this year. That would be January 30th at 10 a.m. That is a Saturday, January 30th at 10 a.m. Please be ready for this prophetic platform to bless and empower your life. And if it is your first time watching with us today, you are welcomed by the entire ALCC family. Please go ahead and text VIP to 718-312-2253. I'll say it again. That's 718-312-2253. That is all the announcements for today. Thank you for joining me. I will now welcome back our very own senior pastor, Dr. Festus Adeye. Amen. Brutal family. Thank God for that time of giving. Amen. It's our covenant, uh, I mean, covenant expectations. We're in the covenant. We're not just ordinary people. We are people of covenant. That is why we can say, these two shall pass, we will not pass with it. So, thank God for exercising your covenant of giving. As you have offered to God, you will never suffer. Well, you've heard the announcement. Join us in all the programs. Like I told you last week, it is your responsibility to connect. I don't know, majority of you, I don't know where you live. I don't know where you are. I don't know where you work. So, it is the responsibility of the sheep. To follow the shepherd. I will tell you where I am, where we're supposed to do through all the various mediums. WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I call you through our robocall. It is left for you as a member of the flock, the sheep, to f follow the shepherd. Don't allow yourself to be isolated. There are wolves, lions, hyenas out there looking to pounce on an isolated sheep to eat him. Don't make yourself a sheep victim or a victim at all for the hyenas there to eat you. It will not be your portion. But it's a decision you have to make. Run after us. Go after us. Hung, let there be hunger for what's happening in the church. What's pastor saying? What's God speaking? Follow the instructions so that as you connect, you will collect. I decree again, these two shall pass. But none of us will pass with it, including you, including me, and everyone in our household. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance of favor upon you and grant you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. ASCC 2021, my year of supernatural restoration. I will never break down. I will forever break through.